This will be the global atmospheric bath for plants as the century unfolds. Beyond that, while the pine trees grew about 12% faster in our forest, consistently for the first seven years of the experiment, I haven't seen the data for the last three, uh, but consistently for the first seven years of the experiment, poison ivy was the champion species in the forest and showed roughly a 70% growth increase. Not only were the plants that much larger, but the toxicant, the allergen per gram of leaf tissue uh, roughly doubled. This is one of the earliest findings that has shown a number of changes in plant chemistry, in drug plant chemistry, uh, and in this case, a allergenic uh, plant compound that will have huge and significant and costly human impacts uh, as this century unfolds. This is just a direct carbon dioxide effect, not a carbon dioxide effect uh, played out uh, through the eyes of temperature. So I would say that uh, I, I got a couple of uh, things that I've noticed on this. Well, I want to make one other point here. Um, throughout your talk, you said a number of things as direct statements that I would take issue with individually. The IPCC climate models are wrong. Um, they may not be perfect. They may not be as good as they will be in 10 years. But this is the best that 2,500 scientists from around the world thought they could do when they got together to discuss where we were. And the conclusion of that entire report is that humans were having an effect on climate and the effect was likely to get worse and have significant impacts as the century unfolded. The Greenland ice pack did not melt. We have all kinds of, well, the thousand years ago or 4,000 years ago. We have all kinds of evidence that it's melting and melting more rapidly now than it used to. And all the ice that melts that is not today floating on the sea surface adds water to the ocean and causes sea level to rise. Uh, the comment that sea level is flat for the last three years, this seems to go in the face of all the work of climatologists that should convince all of us that looking at a one, two, three, even five year record of a climate variable is meaningless. These are long term variables and we're dealing with long term change here. And to suggest that a, a, the last three years of sea level being uh, relatively flat, in other words, not increasing uh, or decreasing very much, uh, essentially violates that same rule. I would conclude then that looking at, at your talk, we should not demonize energy. We should demonize fossil energy that's derived from carbon. There are lots of alternatives out there. Homo sapiens is an intelligent species, a bright young chemical uh, engineers ought to be able to deal with this problem. Roughly half of our energy use uh, in electricity uh, can be dealt with simply by improvements of efficiency that go right to the bottom line of either you or me or the corporation using energy. No excuse for not doing that other than energy's been so cheap because the impacts of climate have not been factored in uh, that we've never been motivated to do so. Wind, wind power, where you can generate it, is roughly at the same price of coal-fired power plants. Uh, the solar has a number of attractive options uh, that I think should be pursued. And people have referred to the southeastern U.S. as the Saudi Arabia of biomass. We have enormous potential to grow, to let plants, because they take up carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, to let them help mitigate the problem by taking up carbon dioxide, fix, fixing it into plant biomass or cellulose, and using that to generate biofuels that can replace the fossil fuels that are the source of this problem. Thanks. Thank you. Um, I, like to, I always hear this IPCC thing thrown around. It's called an argument from authority. If you're the guy that's actually built the data sets from scratch, it doesn't matter if there's a hundred guys out there that say something else. You look at the authority of the data, not the models, not the theory, but the data themselves. I was on the IPCC. I was a lead author. I can assure you, I can assure you it was a political the, the, the people that were selected for the IPCC were selected by their governments. Right there, you know, it's a political thing. 
and, and it's becoming more so evidently because you can only be on there if you have the certain view. So it is not surprising at all when you pre-select those who will be writing the report that the report comes out the way it is. Um, I'm getting old, I need these things. Uh, just a, a few things here. I was trying to listen as well as, as think about saying this. Um, the most rapid rate Greenland melted was in 2005. I took that rate of 2005. It's really slowed down since then, by the way. And that is a one and a half inches per century. If Greenland melted at the most rapid race, rate we have observed it in the past 10 years. Um, and that three years, the last three years of sea level, I showed that because you hear the statement that sea level is increasing or accelerating. The second derivative of that curve is not positive. This is a decreasing uh, uh, trend on that. But it could turn back up. There, there, I'm not saying it's not going to do that. Michael Crichton does know about science. He has an MD. He was a postdoc at Scripps, uh, at, at UC San Diego Med School. He knows about science. And, and I can assure you, having been on many of those panels, consensus is not science. Um, Stern reports, uh, uh, you know, in, in the world where I live in, those kind of exercises really don't match. I think the best person to work on that is a fellow named Bjorn Lomborg, who did exactly the kind of, if we spend a dollar, this is how much gain we have. This is the cost, this is the benefit. And it turns out things like spending dollars on uh, micronutrients for children in Africa give you about $200 for every dollar spent. Spending it on CO2, and he accepted uh, many of the Stern Review's things, gets you back about 50 cents. So it is not a cost benefit in that term. Um, I don't, you, you mentioned that sea level rose by a factor of four recently. That, that's the one I just don't know where that came from. Um, the drought is not increasing in the United States. If you go into the West and go back a thousand years with our records we have now, it was tremendously worse back in the 12th century and other centuries. And that, that's very clear from all the records that we have. So the situation in the United States is not getting worse in terms of drought or, or floods or anything. Uh, when it comes to corn or something, I hope you already saw that the picture that he showed about the corn borer moving up, that's already wrong because the sea level, I mean the temperature in the southeast has declined in the last hundred years unlike models are able to predict. But even so, I deal with farmers a lot because as a state climatologist, in Alabama you can grow 240 acre corn now. They're, they used to be 30, you know, 100 years ago. They're looking for 300 bushels an acre coming up in the next few years. We have the technology to overcome these kinds of things that we see. There's something called advancement and adaptability and, and learning that is embodied in what we are able to do with uh, these kinds of uh, technologies with uh, growing things. Uh, you know, the world food production has not declined. It is still going up, and I don't think you have to worry about that. Um, I want to save that one for the last point here. Uh, I like the one about poison ivy. It's always fun to mention poison ivy without mentioning the fact one-sixth of our, uh, our plant food supply for humans has increased as a result of CO2. You think about what that means in the world food supply, one-sixth of it. I don't know if I can take five minutes here. I'm almost to the end. Um, what? Oh, well, yeah, he, he gave me the five more minute sign. Um, we test models. You can claim all you want about a model, but to us, to a scientist, a model is a hypothesis. It's something that needs to be tested. And we are one of the few groups in the world that is capable of creating the kind of data sets from the digital counts on satellites or dusty records in a London archive or something like that to specifically test. You know, without saying yay or nay, whether you like models or not like them, let's test them. And when we test them, they fail time and time again, as I showed you just a few examples of that in the most fundamental parts, by the way, of what the models are. Um, malaria, malaria used to be endemic to the Arctic Circle. The temperature is not the characteristic there, it's public health infrastructure. When they built the Erie Canal, a malaria was part of the real problem in keeping the thing going in the summertime up in New York. That's how far malaria used to be, but public health infrastructure, wealth that countries have is how you take care of malaria. Um, so let me just say in conclusion here that um, I don't want to demonize carbon-based energy. You and I are likely alive today because of carbon-based energy. When my uh, three-year-old grandson comes up, hugs me around the knees, and says, I love you, Grandpa, 
I would not have had that experience 100 years ago.